Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm Michelle Brown, Creative Director at MixedMediaArt.net and I am so excited to be with you today to have a play with the ScrapFX Junk Journals. Now this is something that we've had in our store for oh, about three or four months and I'm having so much fun playing with them and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. So today we will go through what's in the ScrapFX Junk Journal kit. I'll show you how I put them together with my five hole pamphlet stitch and then I will run you through the junk journal that I've been putting together and you can see some of the things I've been doing. So let's go. So, firstly the junk journal kit. So it um, comes all packaged up from ScrapFX and has everything you need to get started. So it comes with some of these pages already cut out with some beautiful designs. There's five or six in all. There are um, graph pages. There's some transparencies, some cutouts. Um, for those of you that are Melbourne based, you'll recognize our um, Melways. Though of course, for those of you perhaps in Sydney or in the US, you wouldn't recognize it. But this is what we used to use before we had GPS and our phones to tell us where to go. So we've got heaps of these lying around. We've got some index cards cut out. There's some um, sketch paper, text, a lovely tag, and more text. And it comes with some wax thread to help you assemble it, as well as... Um, the envelope that they use for cover, which is a really um, nice way of giving yourself a nice robust color cover and complete instructions. So it shows you here that these are the different varieties the junk journal comes in. So there's steampunk, nature, construction, chevrons, patterns, lace and geometric. And they are all just stunning. And of course, if you want to see more details, pop over to the mixedmediaart.net store and search for junk journals and you will find photos of all of these kits and each kit has a variety of different pieces so they may not look exactly like mine but there will be all the instructions there and everything you need to get started so these are really well priced of course free shipping over a hundred dollars to everyone in Australia and we would love for you to come and play along with our junk journals so let me set that aside now what I want to show you is my three sorry my five hole pamphlet stitch and that's what I've done here on this one you can see it's got the five holes in it. You can use three or five holes. I just find something now that it's starting to get this size, which is heading up towards the, you know, the 22 centimeter mark. It's just a bit better to have a few more holes because it's a little bit more robust. So what we need for all of our book binding is some sort of um, thread. I like using the wax thread, which of course is on the mixedmediaart.net website. We've got a pointy tool and all for creating holes. Um, if you've got some upholstery needles, that's great. I've lost mine, so I'm just doing it without it at the moment. I've got a couple of little bulldog clips to help us hold the pages together. These are really useful, especially with junk journaling because the pages are different sizes, so we want to try and keep them as firm as we can. We've got a ruler and a pencil just to help us get the holes in the right place. Again, you're welcome to eyeball it. I've got a little mat here that I use for punching the holes on because we want to make sure we keep our fingers out of the way because we don't want to hurt ourselves. And some scissors for cutting the waxed thread. So the first thing that I'm going to do, now these are some bits and pieces that I've grabbed to show you. So we've got the envelope as the cover. We've then got the next pages. So you can put them in in whatever order you like. Because they are all different sizes, it's a junk journal, don't get too caught up in it. You can move them all to one end or the other or place them somewhat randomly. It really doesn't make any difference. This is the exciting part about junk journaling is that you're using maybe not junk, maybe well curated ephemera, as I like to think of it. And there's lots of different ways that we can do it. What I will make sure we do though is keep it inside sort of that so I know that the end holes will capture it. I'm going to put the little cutout in and then it comes with a tag as well. Now you don't have to fold that in the middle. I might fold mine to one side. But what I will do is place it in the middle just to help me keep an eye on it. Now maybe I don't need that with that one so I might move that one back a couple of spots. There we go. Now always before you bind your books just have a flip through and check that you're happy with it. You can start to see how these different levels will come to light as you flick through it. Okay, 
that's what we want to do now when we're happy with that and like I said just pretty much centering it in the middle of that envelope that we're using here as the um, cover and then getting our bulldog clips come on Michelle words bulldog clips there we go to hold it in place and I'm going to sit the tag there as well so the next thing I'm going to do going to do is just pencil marking where I want the five holes to go now again there's lots of different thoughts on how accurate to do that I'm not too worried but what I want to make sure is that my holes are capture the pages on the um the end holes and then just like I said putting those five holes in makes all the difference so I'm going to eyeball it about there and mark it in the middle so this is 21 so half of that will be 10 and a half and then we want to holes uh, about I don't know a centimeter and a half two centimeters from the end so for those of you watching elsewhere it's about half an inch in and then again eyeball it or just mark it with a hole so that's nine centimeters so we put marks just in between those two so nine four and a half so there you go you can see I've made some pencil marks there where we want the holes to go now what I might do is just remove that tag and mark the holes underneath as well just so I can then line it up later and I know it should be right so there we go there are our holes okay so the next thing we're going to do if you've got a cropper dial punch you can always use that as well I like using them all if you've got a, a sharp upholstery needle like I said that can work just as well now the way I like to do it is we've got it held firmly now the key is we need the hole because we've got a bit of thickness we need the hole to come right through sorry, right through the fold of that so the way I tend to do it is hold it upright like this so I know that I've got all of those folds together and then push it through and of course really carefully watching my fingers on the outside pushing it all the way through and then again repeating that with the other holes because now junk journals can give you a little bit more resistance but there's no rush the great thing about making your own junk journals and journals and books is that once you get the hang of it they're really easy to make they're fun to decorate you can go along the lines of themes or you know anything really now I'm going to pop that in as well some happy watch fingers There we go. And again, these holes are quite a good size, but that's okay because the way we bind it will help cover that up as well. So let me just check that we're pretty happy with that. We are. Okay. So we've got all of our pages together. We've folded them in half. We've marked five holes. So one pretty much in the middle, one a bit in from each side, and then the other two halfway through that. So then we're going to take our wax thread. Now, how much thread? We need three times the length of the spine of course we don't want to use too much and waste it but there's nothing worse than not having enough in the end either so three times or sort of two and a bit times will be plenty so we'll just cut that to length okay so the next thing to consider is whether we want to leave the thread on the inside or the outside so on the one that I've done I've left the thread on the outside so when I finish decorating it I can add beads to it but what I'm going to do with this one is leave the thread on the inside so it will look a bit more finished on the outside. So what we do is start from the middle and this is how we do our pamphlet binding. So like I said, if you've got an upholstery needle, that's great. I've lost mine. So first thing, inside to out, push it through. Hopefully the wax thread is going to cooperate. If not, we can just speed it a little bit nothing like crafting in real time is there there we go so pull that through and then we just want to leave a bit of a tail there okay so the next thing we want to do is to go outside from in and we want to come back in through this hole now because I've punched it from inside out it might just need a bit of gentle persuasion to go back this way again watch your fingers then we want to take the string from outside to in through all the layers so when you're doing this yourself, no rush. Just 
Take your time. And it can get quite therapeutic when you get the hang of it. Okay, so there we go. Pull that through there. Okay, so we've started in the inside. We've gone to out, then we've gone to our first hole to our right and come from out to in. Now, our next move is to go to the end hole, top or bottom, not sure yet, and then push it back from inside to out. Now, and pull it firmly, not too firmly that we tear the holes, but just firmly enough, and then we can adjust it at the end to get the tension right. Okay, now turning it back over, we want to come back in to this hole. Now, what you might need is to use your awl to open up that hole. What we don't want to do is split the string that's already there, or else we won't be able to adjust it because it won't flow freely. Flow freely, that's what I'm trying to say. So we pull that back in, and you can see it's starting to give us that nice edge there. So, okay, we've come here. Now we want to bypass the middle hole, pop up to this next hole, and essentially do a mirror image of what we've just done. So inside to out, pull it firm, come back to the outside, redo that hole. You know, the first few times I did this, I always had to just go back and double check that we had it around the right way. Okay, so top hole from outside to in, back to this hole, from inside to out, and again, watch your fingers and try not to split the thread. Let me do that. In to out. And finally, back from the outside, back into the middle. So again, opening up that hole. From outside, again, outside to in. Now, you can see that we've got uneven edges, and that's okay. So what we need to do is just follow it through and pull it tight. So we pull this first one to help level that up. So we really want to split the difference there. Then we'll be on the right track. So that's created a lump there. Then we want to pull that one to pull that tight. Then we pull it there. Then we pull it here. And we just work it around and again don't try and pull it too many steps ahead because we don't want to tear our holes and look if you are um, a sewer and have a sewing machine out you're more than welcome to just run this through your sewing machine that is probably the simplest way but i'm not a sewer and even though i have my mother's old sewing machine i don't tend to use it because i can never get it to work properly i haven't had the patience now you can see here this is still a little bit loose i'm not happy with that tension so I'm going to just work it back through, pulling this one, pulling them around, and then we sort of just get the hang of knowing which one's connected to which. There we go. And then the same here. And oh, maybe that could just be a little tighter. So pulling it that way. No, pulling it this way. And then that way. There we go. Okay. So when you're happy with that, you can see it's a little bit out but that's okay again no one's going to notice Want that one pull tight again you really got to keep working on both sides just checking both sides because once you've done this bit then then it's done you won't have to worry about it any longer okay now to tie it off what i like to do really simple reef knot so i will split it so that i've got one side either side of that just to help hold that larger middle stitch in then reef knot so we want to do right over left and pull it tight and then left over right and pull it tight and what that will do is form a little bit of a knot now the way that I like to teach it is that what I then do is because this is a wax thread it will actually won't slip but I'm always worried that my knots are going to come undone so I just thread that through there a little bit just like that so you can see I've threaded that through and then I can trim that off outside the end hole but inside that and then what I will do I didn't bring any either using some of the Dina Wakely mixed media tape or some washi tape is then just to tape over it and then it becomes a surface that's easier to decorate and easier to paint over I'll show you how I did mine in my junk journal so there we go now if you've got any questions pop them below in the comments 
So there we go, I think it's safe now to pull these off. Now, if it turns out that you have, something's moved a little bit and you need to redo it, then that's fine. The first time I did it, I forgot the tag, so I had to undo it and do it again. And then what you can do is leave that in your book press or in your, um, just under something overnight, and that will help um, flatten it out. And then your junk journal will be ready to go. So I love the pamphlet binding because you can see how flat it is when you um, open the book up. Really great if you even want a gel print on it because you can get it quite flat. You can access all the pages. You can see here that we've caught this one in and we've caught it just in the end there, which is good. Like I said, a little bit rough there, but when we tape that up, we won't notice. Oh, I can't wait to get decorating this. Bits of notebook, some old medical text. I've cut out our beautiful Melways there of Doncaster and then the end of our folder. So let me show you what I've done with my junk journal. So I've been throwing this together for a couple of months now and I'll show you some of the things that I've done with it. So same envelope cover, I have die cut out some letters to add junk journal to it. We talked the other week about making stickers with you anyway so i'll put double-sided tape on it the one that we've got the crafts for you um what they call the toilet roll the double-sided adhesive put that on the back to cut out those with my die cut added this with i think it was the dilutions paints because that's all i had with me at the time and here i've added the scrap effects um rice paper this is i think the clock one and you can see i popped it on there trimmed it net and then put the same the same gray over it as well i think this might have been gel plated as well you can see a few other colors in there and then turned it around the edge there. So here's my Melways page. I did a bit of gel printing on this before I put it together to give it some colour. But again, you can do it either way. You could print first and then assemble it. Or assemble it and then decorate on it. So what else have I got? I've got a dark room door stencil. The flowers and also the um, diamonds. I've got some art for Marlene bits and pieces cutouts here and there. And I've got some scrap effects transparencies. When I talked about the adhesives and using the Crafters Workshop gel medium, matte medium to take that shine off as well. So I've added that, but just sort of knocked it back a bit. A little bit of doodling with black pen. Here I've used the Scrap FX, I think this is Confident Woman. So already done a fair bit of painting on the back with gel plating. I think I used a small one here. Added the rice paper with the gel medium. Added some colours with the I think this was both the Dilutions paints and the Dina Wakely scribble sticks added the words in added some highlighting with a Posca pen black pen so not too much more there ah so this is the page when I was first trying out my um, D, um, Dilutions paints I created this page by putting all the extra paper paint left over and that gave me a really pretty background then I stamped these Dina Wakely figures Put a little bit of gesso on to help knock that back and we'll talk about that more in our um, gesso masterclass. Some stamping, a little bit of washi tape to help create that horizon, a little bit of shading to sit that through. We've got a transparency so you might be able to see, it's always a bit hard when it's shiny, that that, hang on, put something right under it, that this has got some colour on it. So I've done that with my Faber-Castell markers, just adding a little bit of colour in there for some interest. Of course, you could stamp on the transparencies with your stays on ink, whatever you wanted to do. And this sort of worked out well because I lined the collage up on this side. So again, some more scrap effects. Rice paper, I think this is the, the Michelle Logan one. Some more paper. And there, again, is that really pretty pattern that already comes cut out in your page with some different bits highlighted behind it. So a few more pages that probably need a little bit more work, a little bit more of the rice paper that we used on the front, a little bit more of the other one, um, or a little bit of the stenciling that we similar to what we did the other day. Um, here I've actually tipped in this page. So tipping in is where, rather than actually binding it in, I've taken a small line of double-sided tape, cut that to size. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it because that's sort of the point. But you will see that when I open it, it's actually you know, quite stuck to that page. So the idea is, is that that really becomes part of that page rather than being a separate page on its own. So I thought that was quite fun. I think that's the um, Scrap FX Transparency Machines. Another page we haven't worked on yet. Some more gel printing, some more collage. 
Uh, so this is some of the work that my niece did at the Bendigo Picture to Page show back in March. Remember the old days when we could all go to craft shows? Oh, hopefully those times will come back again soon. Another cutout there. We've added some of the art by Marlene Tabs. Um, I think this one was a Delusions collage. They're new collage papers. Here we've got the tag, so we've put it here and added some colours, some different collage elements. I've tipped in another little bit of transparency here. And again, you can just see that I've coloured some of that as well with the um, Faber-Castell pit pens. Some more Dilusions or Dian um, Reevely cutouts. What else have we got? Ah, yes. Yeah. So a huge combination of things here. We've got gel printing on the back. We've got some stenciling. We've got some collage with the rice papers and the Dilusions elements. And what we did here, I'm not sure if you can see, is taken one of the Scrap FX transparencies and put some of our deco foil on it. So the deco foil will stick to the transparencies. I'm not sure you can see, but even though it's shiny, it's actually gold and shiny. So we've done a little bit of collage there, some more stenciling, gel plating, a bit more, and so on and so forth. So, oh, I don't know where that one's come from. Okay, this was a card that we made the other day with the foiling. I've just tipped that in with the um, washi tape. And that reminds me, I was going to show you how I've used, oh, I haven't done that one. So yeah, what I would normally do is before I decorate it, is put some tape along the, the stitching as well. So if you didn't want it to show up as much, that helps um, create a smoother surface so you can decorate over it. Again, some more um, Dina Wakely stamps. I think we've got those in the mixedmediaart.net store. Washi tape, using the tabs there. Oh, I think if you watched our adhesives special, that was some of the collage work we've done there. Another transparency the pages and the rest that we have to go so i hope that's given you a few ideas of what to do with your scrap fx junk journal so we've looked at what comes in the kit and there's that full set of pages the instructions and the wax thread we've gone through how to do the five page pamphlet five whole pamphlet binding so again go back through that tutorial step by step make the holes measure it up to the edges and then just take your time going through, looping it around, adjusting the attention, and adjusting the tension, and then just checking it before you tie it off and then putting that under a flat surface before you decorate it. And I hope you have a really good time. So if there are any other questions, please pop them below in the comments. And of course, head over to mixedmediaart.net and click on our online store to get your very own junk journal now if you have any questions like i said you'll find our phone number on the website and the shop as well deliveries throughout australia and new zealand if you're in melbourne you're more than welcome to come and pick them up with our contactless delivery and i hope you're going to have a chance to play soon so this is michelle brown signing off i hope you have a fantastic day thank you